Intro to Lighting. So lighting is, of course, very important in the visual arts, all uh, aspects of the visual arts, painting, illustration, cinematography. And of course, here we're uh, particularly interested in animation. And of course, there are many wonderful examples in uh, recent movies like uh, Kung Fu Panda, especially Kung Fu Panda 2. Uh, but a scene that I think is uh, particularly good to look at uh, to appreciate the power of um, careful and thoughtful lighting in animation is the uh, married life sequence in uh, Up. So uh, the sequence starts with the contrast between the bride and groom sides at the uh, at the wedding and if you look carefully lots of details about what was done uh, with the lighting uh, in this uh, scene. Then uh, it progresses through the the highs and lows of married life um, captured in um, the uh, lighting very very nicely. Uh, you should recall that in this um, entire sequence uh, there is uh, no spoken word. It's um, only the visuals and uh, music. Then uh, near the conclusion of the sequence the uh, autumn part of the life of this uh, married couple. Um, of course the the colors convey a lot of emotion but but much of it is in the subtleties of the uh, of the lighting. Now we'll be looking at uh, lighting from the point of view of physics so a lot of optics and we can um, break down the elements of lighting in a few basic forms. There's uh, the light sources that uh, produce light, then that light uh, may be reflected off of surfaces. Uh, those surfaces uh, may have shadows. Another way that light travels from the light source to uh, the viewer or the camera is uh, scattering. Uh, so something like light passing through a cloud. Uh, and then uh, sometimes light travels through uh, transparent uh, media and is bent in the process, and we call that uh, refraction. Then finally, uh, the image is formed in the eye and processed in the brain, and there's many interesting elements of optics involved there, uh, especially the perception of color. Now, a fundamental principle in optics is that in geometric optics, the path of light rays is always reversible. And what that means is if we set up a laser shining into a mirror, which then the light passes underwater and there's a viewer, uh, if we trace the, that light ray, then um, it's always possible to switch the light source and the viewer. And if we do that, the resulting light ray uh, follows exactly the same uh, path. So we have a symmetry of uh, light going from a source to a viewer. Uh, it's the same path if we switch the uh, viewer and the source. Now this is has a practical application in computer graphics in the following sense. If we have uh, an actual light source which is shining light on an object and a viewer is viewing the scene, uh, many of the light rays that go from the light source and hit the object uh, do not reach the viewer. So they bounce off in some other directions uh, that don't happen to reach the viewer or reach the camera. Now uh, we can use ray tracing and this principle of reciprocity to say that for every light ray that goes from the light to the viewer, we have a reciprocal ray 
that goes from the viewer to the light. So it's more convenient to trace those rays that come uh, from the viewer to different points in the object and see uh, what ray corresponds to the one that goes back to the light source. In other words, uh, we only calculate the light rays that actually reach uh, the viewer or the camera. Uh, here's another uh, picture of that showing these um, ray trace, this ray tracing concept. So uh, we imagine we have a camera, we have an image that is formed on a screen, and then uh, we have some objects that are supposed to represent what will be the image on the screen. Then uh, when we trace a ray from the camera to the object, whatever spot on the screen that ray passes through, that's where the image would be formed. And then we take that ray and we say, well, if we have a light source, uh, what is the ray that goes from the object uh, to the light source? And now we can calculate how much illumination we have on that spot on the object. And, and more complicated things if we want to determine the location of the shadow. Anyway, the point is, this is what's used in computer graphics, tracing rays from the camera to objects and then back to the light source. The physical rays actually come out of the light source, hit the objects, and uh, go to the camera or viewer. Now, let's talk about one of the simplest types of light sources, which would be a directional light source. Now, with a directional light source, all of the uh, light rays are parallel, so they um, reach uh, an object or surface all traveling uh, parallel to each other. The uh, sun is roughly a directional light source. It's not exactly a directional light source, but it's a um, simple approximation to one. Now, uh, in computer graphics, you can set up a directional light source, and here's a simple scene with a cube sitting on a floor, and you see that the uh, different faces have a different uh, brightness. So the brightness is uniform across the face, uh, but each face has a different um, brightness depending on the angle between uh, the face and the light source. By the way, the top of the cube and the floor have uh, the same brightness since um, they're facing in the same direction. Now, the reason that the different faces of the cube uh, have different amount of brightness, and, and this is whether it's a diffuse uh, surface or a more complicated um, surface uh, material model, uh, the reason that the different faces have a different brightness is that the amount of light that is reaching uh, each square inch of those surfaces depends on whether they are uh, facing head-on towards the light, which is when you have the most um, uh, intensity reaching the surface, or if it's tilted uh, away from the, the uh, in this case, directional light source, then the light rays as they reach the surface are spread out over um, more surface or if you will there's fewer light rays which reach the surface because the surface is turned away from um, the light source so uh, as you see in this illustration the in the first uh, case we have seven light rays hitting the surface but when we uh, tilt it uh, because of the angle, we only get uh, five light rays, and so uh, for that <coughs> same surface, we have less light uh, shining on it. This uh, is an effect which uh, creates the seasons of um, the year on Earth. So uh, in July, uh, as you see in this illustration, the Earth is tilted uh, towards the sun in the northern hemisphere, and so we have a brighter uh, light um, in the northern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, and so uh, it's not as bright and then it's not as warm. So it's um, 
warm in July in the northern hemisphere since the Earth is tilted towards the Sun and it's uh, cooler in July in the southern hemisphere um, and, and vice versa so it's nice and warm in the southern hemisphere in uh, January. Now this is a very important effect in uh, lighting because a lot of the uh, sense of dimension uh, for a form is uh, due to this effect uh, that the intensity of light striking a surface uh, varies uh, with angles. So this is a very strong cue of the curvature and uh, shape. Uh, notice that um, the head has a, a fairly smooth curvature and uh, we have a gradual darkening whereas uh, say around the nose it's a much tighter uh, curve and so we have much more contrast uh, from uh, the bright parts to the darker parts say around the uh, the nose. Uh, these are form shadows uh, we'll see more about those in the in another tutorial. Now uh, the most basic use of lighting in illuminating a scene is uh, so-called uh, one-point lighting or, or key lighting. So uh, if we have a scene and we have uh, basically one dominant uh, light source illuminating that scene, uh, this is referred to as one-point uh, lighting. Now we can um, have uh, two-point lighting if we have besides the uh, key light have another uh, light source which adds some ambient light and and this helps to uh, reveal um, parts of the scene which would be lost in in shadow uh, because of the having only a single uh, key light. Now I should mention that um, uh, it's possible to use multiple light sources to represent each of these uh, key and uh, fill. So the, the key may be composed of uh, multiple light sources and the fill can certainly be uh, composed of multiple light sources to create that ambient light. Uh, then finally three-point lighting is when we uh, add a rim light to uh, accentuate uh, sh uh, edges which would be otherwise lost in uh, shadows. So we see that nicely mostly around the Z. Uh, the middle of the Z here uh, is picked up um, by the uh, rim light. Uh, this is sometimes called the kicker or a backlight and um, in close-ups it's um, often used to accentuate the, uh, the hair. So uh, that's uh, three-point lighting using um, a main key light, a fill light to uh, put in some ambient light overall to uh, soften uh, the shadows, and then um, rim light to accentuate some parts such as the uh, outline of the hair uh, on this uh, actress. So it's a very common type of, of lighting, um, looks good but uh, maybe sometimes a little too good. So in uh, summary, uh, physical light rays travel from the light source uh, to the viewer or camera. By reciprocity we can trace rays from the camera uh, back to the light source and that is convenient to do in uh, computer graphics uh, algorithms. A directional light source has a uh, parallel light rays. Uh, light intensity uh, decreases as a surface turns away from the light source. So that was the uh, spreading of the rays uh, over the uh, area um, when the surface is turned away from the light source. And then finally uh, three-point lighting uh, combines uh, key fill and rim lights which provide uh, main ambient and accent uh, lighting in a scene. So this is just the introduction. We'll get into a lot more uh, details about uh, light sources, uh, shadows, reflections, and all of that 
in the upcoming tutorials. So see you then.